Hi there and welcome back. A lot of people have asked me how to take cuttings of black pine seedlings and so that is going to be the subject of today's workshop. If you find the following content helpful then you can thank me by clicking the thanks button just below the video. If you have done any research on the internet or perhaps on social media uh, people will often refer to the magazine content from the Bonsai Today, which I'm holding. Yeah, it's one of the older magazines, edition 20. I believe it was repeated in a more recent edition, but all of them are now out of print. So if you can't find, uh, well, try and find a copy if you can. Uh, but uh, this is a, this, this article that was written is really the blueprint or the guideline that uh, certainly myself, I follow and I guess many others do as well. And it really uh, it sort of lays it, it really lays it out step by step. You might recall this tree from a video that I did before uh, where I repotted it. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, I will link to that. Uh, but you can see now the benefit of doing cutting, uh, seedling cuttings, is that you have a very short distance here between the roots because this is where the cutting would have ended and the new roots would have issued from, from that point. But you can see the, the stem here is very, very short. You don't get this if you don't do cuttings of the seedlings. This will be much longer. So if you're wanting to do smaller trees, uh, shohin or root over rock or various other spe uh, styles, uh, particularly smaller, smaller versions of them, uh, then seedling cutting is definitely the way to go. I like to use these little, I think they're nine centimeter, eight, nine, uh, eight, nine centimeter, little plastic, very cheap containers. Essentially, I'm not, I'm planting, putting the cutting into this and then leaving it in there. Whereas the article shows or describes the process of uh, after the, the, the seedling cuttings have taken root, to then uprooting them and then planting them out. I'm just skipping out that step. It is just about labor saving. So you can use a container like this if you like um, and, and, and put two or three cuttings into this. Um, I just put one um, or you can use a large seedling tray. Now my growing medium of choice is crushed silica sand, which is around about a three to four four millimeter particle size mixed with akadama. That's a small particle of akadama. You will also need to use some fine sand. This is not so fine. This is probably one to two millimeter particle size sand. Ideally, you want to go finer than this. Uh, so it's, it's, it, it's, again, it's a crushed silica sand. If you can get river sand, uh, or finer quartz or silica sand, that'll be perfect. Take your container, in this case, these little plastic containers that I'm using and fill that up to the rim with your growing media. Now I'm going to go and water this so that the particles will cling to one another better and not because it's absolutely dry now. And uh, you'll see in the next step why it was important to water it at this point. Now I've made myself this little tool, uh, but you can use anything really that can make an indentation in the soil. And I push that nice down in there and you can see now the particles will stay in that shape. Otherwise, if they were dry, they would just slide in. Now I'm going to take some of my filter sand and I pour that into the hole that I've just made. And I'm going to go and water that again. So this has now been watered. Uh, my rooting hormone of choice is Dippin Root, which is a liquid uh, rooting hormone where you pot, put several droplets uh, into a little container. So you would fill it up with water to that point first, and then you would put the droplets in above that water line and then just give it a shake. Uh, to mix it. Now the the number of droplets that I use is for difficult to root cuttings which is eight drops for this amount of water. Using this uh, med this measure of uh, I, I believe it's a tablespoon measure it comes with your fungicide pesticide bottles. It makes it possible for the cutting to, to make contact proper contact with the uh, solution and so I will mix uh, three or four of of this quantity and empty it into this. Now, when you do your cuttings, it's best to do it on a soft surface, something like this uh, rubber mat. You can also use a piece of wood. 
uh, but I prefer to use the rubber. It just it's it's like padding on the cutting because you're going to be using a blade to cut it, and you don't want to squash the you don't want to do any you want to do as little damage to the seedling as possible. And then the length of the cutting. Uh, what, what you what of the stem that you want remaining is going to be roughly uh, about 15 uh, between 10 and 20 millimeters 20 millimeters is a bit much uh, 10 is very short uh, I would say 15 is, is certainly safe and that's what I've got yes so I've drawn a line uh, with a marker on my uh, piece of silicon uh, rubber and uh, this will just help me to, to check uh, the, the distance or the length of the stem that I'm keeping on the cuttings. And then you're gonna need, uh, I prefer to use a brand new blade. Uh, you can use a grafting knife. You can use a surgical uh, blade if you, can get, if you can get one as well. Uh, anything very sharp. And you might also want to have something like surgical spirits handy that you can occasionally sterilize the blade as well, but it needs to be as sharp as possible. So you wanna select a few uh, cut uh, seedlings, that uh, not too many at a time, just enough that you can work with. I'm working, uh, my pots are in rows of four, so I'm selecting four seedlings at a time, and I'm always looking to select the ones that um, have the best characteristics and are the strongest. Uh, to do my cuttings with. I wanted to show you three different seedlings that are at different stages of development uh, and to, so that I can show you when the right time is to take the cutting. So you can see on the left hand side this one is still very green and there's no development in the very little development here in, in the foliage or in these, these needles and so this one is too immature and would probably die if you were to do a cutting of it. This one, you can see there's considerably more development and the color change is quite obvious between these two. This one is definitely more of a purplish kind of color and you've got very much more foliage that has developed as well. And then the one on the furthest on the right is, uh, has actually gone, has gone over to red, but it's also started to fade in this region and there's much more foliage as well. Uh, this one definitely, as I say, is too premature to take a cutting of, so you should wait until it gets to this color. Uh, this one is fine to do, and this one is fine to do. So either of these stages, and you will probably find in your seedling tray uh, a, a variety of uh, seedlings, well, uh, seedlings at various points. So select these ones, to, to do cuttings of and rather allow these to develop for a few more weeks until it reaches this stage. I'm going to now take the seedling and I'm going to allow the edge of the seedling to hang off the side of the piece of wood and then I take my anti cutter at this point that I've already measured and then you gently so don't don't push down because that's going to squash the stem you want to pull it and as it pulls the blade, the weight of the blade really does the cutting and then put it into your hormone solution as soon as possible. Let's do another one. Now you can make this cut. I'm showing you making the cut perfectly straight across or perpendicular to the stem, but you can also make the cut at a 60 degree angle as well. The benefit of doing that very angled cut is that it's going to generate instead of multiple roots, which is what generates uh, or, or what happens, what will happen if you cut straight across, you'll get roots radially forming from the edge of that cut. But if you cut uh, at down at an angle, you're going to get more than likely only one root growing from the tip of that and that is going to, uh, that's going to be very useful if you want to do cascade styles uh, because you can then, that, well that's another, that's actually another, ep it'll have to be another episode because I'm not going to be able to cover that in this, uh, in this workshop, um, but there is a function or purpose of that or for that, but in this case we're just cutting straight across because we're looking at, at producing uh, uh, roots all around now you can see I didn't cut, uh, I didn't cut properly at the, that uh, with this seedling. So I'm just going to make that cut again. So just gently pull it across, and it must be a very clean cut. And don't handle the edge 
of that, uh, that cut with your fingers as well. You might damage it, you might infect it. So it's best just to hold the, the foliage very gently and we'll do this last one. And as I mentioned, get it into the solution as soon as possible uh, because it's going to suck that, uh, uh, that uh, mixed uh, rooting hormone up into the, into the seedling, into the cut ed, uh, end, as well as uh, well, the, this, this, the solution is supposed to penetrate the sides of the stem as well. Once you've put your seedling cuttings into the solution, you can start a timer and I normally, now the instructions for dip and root is that you have them in for a number of seconds. It's like 10 seconds or so. I normally keep it in for a minute and then as soon as it, uh, the timer goes off, I'm going to take the seedling cuttings out. So I've got my prepared container and I like, I don't want to stick the cutting just into the soil like that because it may damage the tip of the cutting. So I use a piece of wire about the same thickness as the cutting itself and I just drop it in there gently work it down and then I just press the soil or the, the sand in around it a little bit just to stabilize it and uh, that's your cutting in place. Let me show you another one. So I take the little piece of wire stick that in make a hole all make sure that to make the hole long enough for the cutting to drop in fully and uh, then just try and close that space up uh, around the cutting. You definitely don't want any movement in the cutting once you've planted it because any roots that do start to issue from the end of the, the cutting may break off. And so you don't want any, so you want to make sure that the, the, the seedling has as little chance of moving as possible. If you found that content helpful and you'd like to thank me for it, please do so now by clicking the thanks button just below the video. When you finish taking your cuttings, then you need to place it into a shaded environment uh, and you need to mist it very frequently. I would say every two hours, ideally, uh, and keep them in bright shade. And this is going to be until you can see that there's obvious new growth uh, on, the, on the cuttings and then you can move it to progressively more sun and then ultimately into full sun and then you can start fertilizing them at the same time. Until next Friday, thank you very much for watching and take care. Goodbye.